Hey, welcome to the Healthy Postnatal Body Podcast with your postnatal expert, Peter Lapp. That, as always, will be me. This is the podcast for the 24th of July. And as always, you know, the day before, ge- before music means I have a guest on. And we're in luck, we're talking uh, baby massage, infant, infant massage with Helen Thompson, uh, who is wonderful at explaining the many, many, many benefits of baby massage. Uh, just a little note, I have a bit of a call today and I only recorded this interview earlier today. So if my uh, sound is a bit more muffled than usual, that is just because, you know, old uh, old Baldy Lap has, uh, has the sniffles. <laughs> right. Anyways, it's a wonderful chat. Uh, she very kind, Helen very kindly gave up half an hour of her time. So without further ado, here we go. Well, what do you say? So when we're talking baby massage, what exactly are you talking about? You know, I take it you're not talking like deep tissue sports massage. <laughs> no, certainly not. Because, I mean, obviously it's a very small baby and you don't, you know, you don't want to massage them too hard. But it's a very soft and gentle touch. But uh, babies love to be touched, as you probably mm-hmm. know. And it's the first, it's the first thing that when babies come out of the womb that they're actually touched and cuddled and they actually Mm. thrive on touch and it's just a very soft gentle touch for the baby and they they love having massages like you and I do but we just don't do it as hard as you know we don't want to sort of I don't want to say kill the poor baby (laughs) we don't we know we don't want to we don't want to do it too hard to put um, to the pressure's too hard. Yeah, because there's but, a big um, difference, isn't it, between baby massage, which you're talking about, and um, a trend that I find slightly worrying that, that's been picking up is like baby adjustments and chiropractor mm, mm. For, for babies. You're just talking about nice rub downs and all that, I think. Yes, I am. I I'm not disputing chiropractics. I I don't want to go down that route. I I personally sure. don't like them myself, and I've had chiropractics myself. And I and I immediately tense up mm-hmm. if somebody's going to crunch me. I immediately <laughs> tense up. And and baby massage is all about relaxation for the mother as well as for the baby, because there are sometimes when mothers have postnatal depression or they don't want to touch their baby, they don't want to communicate with their baby, they don't want to connect with their baby. So baby massage actually gives them those tools to be able to touch and connect with the baby because, and it's something I'll, I'll add at the beginning, we always, add, we always ask the baby's permission. And so many people say to me, but how do you ask a baby's permission? Mm-hmm. And babies communicate to us, they, they communicate to us in so many different ways. They communicate through their eyes. They communicate by their body movement. They communicate by um, crying. And they they communicate in so many different ways. So if your baby's looking at you Mm -hmm. and really excited and kicking their legs and getting excited, well, then they obviously do want to be touched and do want to be massaged. So that's when we do it. Um, They don't want to do it when they're they're upset or crying. There is a a, um, rule on that, that if your baby's got colic, and if you know your baby's got colic and they're very upset and distressed, well, then massaging their tummy if they are crying might actually help them to relieve all those bubbles and that trapped wind. But that's the only time when we would massage a baby if if they have colic and we want to relieve the colic. Um, other than that, that's really good. Other than that, we do not. Um, if a baby's crying and if they're sort of squinching their eyes, if you ask them for a massage and they're, you know they're looking upset and they're not looking at you. They're looking away from you. That you know, we don't. You know, we don't touch them because they're. That's them telling us that they don't want to be touched. And I, I always stress that because it's so important that we give our babies respect. Yeah, and that's that's fascinating, isn't it? Because I know some people, you know, myself included, in the older days, my old self, my fifteen year ago self, so to speak, would go, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, you, that sounds insane. Babies can't give permission, but we expect it from dogs and from puppies. 
Do you know? Mm. I mean, as in, I, I've got three dogs and one is sound asleep on the bed and there's another one lying next to me. And if I want to grab their paw, sometimes they will be okay with it. And other times, not so much. There's a lot of non-verbal yeah. com- communication. And you, with a dog, you would go, yeah, well, he just doesn't like to be touched. With a baby, we're almost, and I say the, the we, I mean the, the uh, royal we, as in we, we the people, so to speak, um, almost expect that you can force the relaxation. Uh, mm-hmm. As in the baby is telling you, actually, I would quite like to sleep right now. I would quite like mm-hmm. to be left alone because that's usually what babies are, you know, eat, poop and sleep, right? It's, um, if yeah. saying, uh, so if they're saying this is my time to sleep, then I suppose the baby massage is is just not, uh, it's not on. So then it, it does help. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to somewhere. I just can't quite figure out where I'm trying to get well, to. I would, it, well, it, I... It, yeah, go on. It, it it helps you read your baby better. As I suppose, yes, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring up a point on what you said just there mm-hmm. about the baby sleeping. There are you you probably know a little bit more about this than I do. I know the basics because I come from a childcare background and I know the basics from the baby massage. But you babies have a lot of different states of when they when they're asleep and when they're awake sure. and when they're alert. Um, and the best time to actually massage your baby is when you're in that quiet alert state. Mm-hmm. And from that quiet alert state is maybe when they've just woken up and they're they're looking around, they're looking for something, you know, looking at you, wanting wanting your attention, sure. wanting some love and communication. That's the time to do it. If you if you do it in any other state, like when they're drowsy, if they've got the if they're trying to close their eyes, you know, that's obviously not a good time, as you say. Mm-hmm. They're saying no. It's my time to go to sleep now. It's me time. I don't want. I don't want you around. I just want to go night nights. I just want to go to sleep or whatever. And I think those sort of states are really important to sort of know. And as a parent, you will get to know what those states are. And yeah, you, no, you no. can. But that that's the key, and it's also very good for actually to help with the relaxation, to help them with sleep as well. Because if your baby's stressed and you're stressed, if you just take a big, a big deep breath in and both relax, well, then your baby will sense what your if your baby will sense that you're relaxed when you touch them and say, "Would you like a massage?" They'll sense your if you're relaxed or if you're if you're not relaxed, they they'll pick that up. Yep. So yeah, that's a that's another point to remember with baby massage as well, that it's great for relaxation, not only for the baby. But also for the mother, it's a mm-hmm. bonding for the mother. It's bonding for the baby. It's communication for both the baby and the mother. Mm-hmm. It's getting to know your baby's cues, as you mentioned, and getting to understand, getting to understand your baby and more. Um, and it you know, it also helps, as I mentioned, with sleep and melatonin. I don't know if you've the, the yeah. hormone melatonin. It's the hormone that regulates the person's body. You know your body clock. Mm-hmm. So that actually helps with some sleep as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like you mentioned, uh, <clears throat> the it helps you relax as a parent, especially when we're talking. Um, I've done a lot of stuff recently on postnatal anxiety, postnatal depression, and all mm, this sort of stuff. Mm, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> and the interesting thing is, and I always, and I and I I know it annoys some listeners, but I like to do it because it, it drives the point home. It was something Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer, said <laughs> a long time ago. So when you're dealing with a puppy or a stressed human being, something like that, the one thing you yourself cannot be is stressed mm-hmm. and anxious because you pass that energy on. Mm-hmm. So learning how to switch that off becomes a very important part of your of, of your skills. And that, in turn, will help you cope with your postnatal anxiety and postnatal depression. So it sounds mm-hmm. to me like what you're saying is, okay, it, it's not for, for people listening who suffer from postnatal anxiety and depression, depending on, of course, the, the uh, severity of it, because I know that there's some really, really bad cases. I'm not trying to minimize it. But it's the... Getting yourself in in a state, getting yourself ready. The realization might not happen for yourself automatically just because you're massaging the baby. You have to make a conscious effort to indeed, like you said, take a deep breath, 
relax, slow down, and pass that energy on mm. to the baby, if if you know what I mean, before it can become a two way, two way street. Yes, because if you're touching your baby when you're like that, they'll pick. Yeah, they, yeah. they'll pick that up. But if you if you're touching a baby and you're relaxing and breathing in and being calm, well then that will pass on and it'll be beneficial to both of you. Yeah, the key is it's beneficial to both. It's not just beneficial to you as a mother, but it was also got to be beneficial to the baby as well. Yes, exactly. And then it becomes a mindfulness thing almost, doesn't it? As in, you have to be aware in the moment. You have to focus on, on what you're doing. And I don't mean focus on going from the little finger to the big finger and going <laughs> to the thumb. I just mean on the, being present in the moment that that's sort yes. of stuff as in this becomes yeah, yeah, it absolutely. this becomes what what you are doing so it's interesting when you talk about this the the ideal state for your baby to be in when it comes to starting the massage because obviously a lot of uh there are a lot of baby massage classes at least in edinburgh there there are tons of these things and in the uk you can pretty much any time of day you can just book a class and you sit in a room with five or ten other moms and, and babies and you're all rubbing your kid so so to speak um so how do you then prepare your baby so that it's in the right state because you can't just uh throw them in the car and and, and throw well them what I always say, because I, I, I've i done both. I've done group courses and I've done one-on-one courses as well, courses with people as well. And what I always say to the mother is if your baby's upset or if your baby's sleeping or if your baby's distressed, don't massage them. And Because I always have a doll. Mm-hmm. I have a few, because I actually teach my massage on a doll because I'd love to massage babies. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, I'm not, I'm trained to teach parents how to massage their babies, not to massage their babies. Oh, okay, I, yeah. I would love to massage the babies, but um, for insurance reasons, I don't do that. (laughs) But I always have a doll. I always have spare dolls. And I always say to the mother, look, if your baby's not in the right space at the moment, please don't feel that you're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. You can either let your baby sleep or you can relax your baby by breastfeeding them or bottle feeding them or doing whatever you need or changing their nappy. I'm used to saying diaper because that's American. I've been talking to so many Americans, so it's nice that I can yeah. use the word nappy. Um, you know, change your nappy or do whatever you need to do to make the baby calm. And you can always watch and observe what other people are doing or watch me. You don't have to sort of physically feel that when you're in a class, you absolutely have to massage your baby. And I always stress that to mums because I think – they, as you said, if if your baby is not in that state, there's no point in massaging them because mm-hmm. they're not going to enjoy it and they're not going to get any benefit out of it. So just allow yourself to give yourself the space to relax both of you, relax you and your baby, and just watch mm-hmm. and observe what other people are doing. And if it's a Zoom course that I would, if I'm doing a Zoom course, I would say mm-hmm. the same thing to mums. Say, look, if you need to go off and feed your baby, don't worry. I can send you the I'll send you the link to where you where you left off so you know mm-hmm. what to do. So, and that's and I think that's always what I say to mums. And I think it's an important point to as you brought up that if they're not ready, just just watch and observe the class without necessarily having to massage your baby. I mean. There are umpteen things you can be doing, like cuddling your baby or or rocking your baby to sleep or whatever you need to do. You can still observe what other people are doing and you can still learn the strokes and what to do. Yeah, because that's that's the thing, I suppose, what you're saying, isn't it? The the class is well, a class, it's 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 your learning experience, it's your it's your teaching mm-hmm. moment, so to speak. Whereas at home, you can actually put that into practice whenever the baby is ready. So the class itself is not like, I don't know, you go to these things once a week, right? You've got your baby mm-hmm. massage class Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock. You slept your baby halfway across town. As we all do, everything's, everything's yeah. half an hour away. And three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, that way, yeah, your baby's not quite ready for it. But it's not, <clears throat> you're there to learn how so you can implement it on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So exactly. the, the, the rest of the week rather than it's a yeah this is not a swimming lesson is 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 what I'm saying. As in you you don't have to swim there and then. No. I mean it would be you can massage there and then. I'm not saying sure. that you can't. Of course you can, but 
Um, and once your baby's also got used to massage and used to used to uh, having a routine of when you can do it. Now, I'm not saying yeah. you're saying it's three o'clock. That might not be their routine. Sure. But if you when you get home, you can actually have it set up a routine of when you're going to do the massage with your mm-hmm. baby. And they get used to that routine and they look forward to that routine. Yeah. They look forward to it. They get excited. Oh, great. It's massage time. Great. I really, I really, I'm going to really enjoy this. And so does the mother because they've set the scene. The baby knows, the baby sees the little blanket going out or whatever you're going to be doing. And they're getting excited because you're rubbing your hands and so you like to massage. And the baby's getting yeah. used to used to your cues. And it's going, oh, yes, I'd love one. Or, or no, I don't want one. But they know when it's coming because they get used to it. Yeah, they basically pick up on all the habits, isn't it? This, if you have the same routine, the same blanket, the same movement, the same setup, and all that sort of stuff. So, how's about? Because I came across this the other day, and and I'm mm-hmm. I'm not sure about this to be honest. I just every now and again I, I look at the internet, and it makes me want to cry a little bit. Essential oils <laughs> for baby. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There, there was a thing, and I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong because I genuinely don't know. Um, it just strikes me as the sort of thing that may it might not be a good idea. Um, the, there was a company that sent me that sent me a link saying, "Can you have a look at this?" Because people every now and again ask me to sell stuff for them. I've never said yes yet, so I'm not sure why they keep emailing me. But every now and again, they say, "Can you have a look?" And uh, this was a company that is selling essential oils for baby, uh, for baby massage, as in to actually rub on the baby and all that. So, is that something we do? Or is that just Baby oil itself is fine, but vanilla. I, I recommend, I mean, I, I've come across a lot of baby massage instructors that yeah. do use essential oils and they put a couple of drops in the, in the, um, like sesame oil or almond oil. Mm-hmm. But I, as, as a person who I love essential oils, but to me, Baby massage is about the smell of the mother or the smell of their surroundings. And that's not, that's the point mm. I might bring up and about the benefits. It's about babies getting to know your smell. And to me, essential oils are too strong for mm-hmm. babies. The, it's it, this, the sense of a, the smell of essential oils are incredibly strong. Yeah. And I suggest, highly suggest that you don't use essential oils um, for babies. And uh, even mixing them, even mixing them with in a carrier oil, I I would rec- I would also say no to. And I actually had a discussion with this about with somebody who I was training with when I did my because I've re- I've retrained with a company in the UK, and I had a chat to her about it. And you know when I was doing the training about essential oils, and she suggested not even a diffuser because I use a mm. diffuser all the time for me. And he she said even a diffuser, the baby is still. In, ingesting that smell sure. that that um smell and it's not that it's not good for babies it's mm-hmm. just that they're too strong for their senses i mean the point of massage is for you to get to know your baby smell for your baby to get to know your smell for you and your baby to communicate and bond with each other mm-hmm. so that's my own personal opinion i feel that essential oil is too strong for babies but i'm not saying you can't use oil that's mm-hmm. you can use oil but just not putting essential oils in and always do a patch test. That's a, that's a very, if you're, even if you're using almond oil or sesame oil or coconut oil or um, apricot oil, whatever mm-hmm. oil you're, you're using, always do a patch test first because no, you, you don't know if your baby's allergic to it or whatever. And it's really important to do that. And i mentioning oils as you also make sure they're organic mm-hmm. and they're cold pressed. Right. Because you don't want to, you don't want to just go to the supermarket and get some olive oil or some almond oil because they're mm-hmm. not, they're not cold pressed and they're not organic. Right, they're, that's yeah. a fair point. So and natural and natural oils as well, but yeah, the essential oils is a, I yeah, it's it's a point that I, I think a lot of people say do it, but I I don't I I strongly recommend just I don't recommend it. Yeah, for that okay, no, but that, that's, that's no no I'm, I, I'm. That's just yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of people saying it's good, but mm-hmm. I I don't agree with it. No, because because it's interesting. Because so. a while ago I did an interview with Therese T. Fortin Barnes, and we were talking oh, about yes. household chemicals. 
Yes, I mentioned, I heard, I listened to that interview. I like yeah, and, that. And she's a lovely lady. She's, I mean, like I said at the time, oh, she, yeah. I mean, I'm a middle-aged white guy, as you can tell, and therefore, by definition, tea is completely out there compared to how I was raised, right? Tea was one of the cuckoo ladies. <laughs> so, so <to> <laughs> she, she, she was one of those ladies that she's just insane. However, science is on her side, and I apologize to her in, in my, in my <laughs> like I said, the, we were, we were, I said, middle-aged white guys, all the, all the, unless it's peer reviewed, I don't believe it, sort of, sort of scenario. Turns out that, yeah, we were wrong, right? And, and diffusers, especially just because you mentioned diffusers, uh, we kind of don't do them anymore. Uh, but it makes sense that around a developing infant, as in really, when we're talking babies, we're talking really, really young and really, really delicate, that a diffuser is just not the best idea in the world to have mm. them breathing in, I don't know, lavender scented oil and, and, and all that sort of stuff. The, the airwick sort of, the Glade plug-in sort of stuff, we also don't do. But even the, my, my, my wife has one, which is a, a, a neon sort of, or omen or whatever it's called. It's one of those fancy ones that you buy. You have to buy in London. It's one of those. We live in Edinburgh. You buy it in London. They ship it up to you. And it costs an absolute <laughs> fortune. Um, but even those things, they are organic essential oils and all that sort of stuff. But I personally wouldn't have anything puffing out uh, mm. any sort of uh, scent near, near a baby. Uh, I just thought it was interesting that there is a market out there now for, for this stuff. Because people are recognizing that... Women now are very keen to connect more and more with their with their child, yes. uh, with, with their infant, um, and and dads are as well. To be fair, I mean, I'm I'm not knocking it. Dads can of course do baby massage as well. This is oh, definitely. Cool. That's <laughs> a, I'm definitely in for that. Definitely, I think that's so important because they need to bond as well. It's not just the mum that bonds with the baby; the fathers do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. Because so, would you say so? Okay, so you you run these classes and you run some via Zoom as well. Um, I take it the vast majority because that's an interesting point. the The vast majority of people that come to you will be mums. I take it will 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 be women. Yes. Uh, do you have the, you seen an increase recently in the number of men that also attend, or is it still just one of those? It's mainly women and they show the husband how it works. I think it's mainly women and they show the husband that it works, but there are some times, I mean, there are some classes where the, the, the husband might come along for the first sort of 10 minutes to sort of mm -hmm. see what it's all about. Yeah. And and then they, I, they some of them stay, some of them don't. But, yes, it is generally women. And I think in, although my main advertising is towards women, I still sure. feel very strongly that, you know, men are just as important as well because I think a lot of the time, it's a good thing for men to do because they, they feel left out. If the baby, if, you know, if you're breastfeeding, the mother's breastfeeding or the mother's the one putting the baby to sleep because mm -hmm. she's either breastfeeding, the dad feels left out because they don't have that bonding connection with the baby in, mm -hmm. in the same respect as the mother does. So that's where, you know, a routine might be good for the dad as well. I mean, I, I'm, yeah, I believe in incorporating both. It's for both mm -hmm. parents, not just yeah. for the mums, but as you, as you asked, most of my classes are mums. Yes. And, and that, Cause that's, see, that's why I prefer the conversation or so I rather have a list of questions ready. Um, because I suppose, um, Baby massage and improving the bonding experience mm -hmm. make, makes uh, bedtime easier for dads. Because when you're talking about dad putting baby to bed and all that sort of stuff, what mm -hmm. I hear a lot is, is parents saying, actually, uh, he will settle or the, the child will settle for me, but won't settle for my husband. Oh, yeah. and, 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 and that, I suppose, baby massage and that linking um that that improving that 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 connection between the dad and the child through baby massage will help with all that sort of stuff as well when there's yeah. more of a connection yeah absolutely 
because it also helps with the child's brain development as well. So if your dad's doing it, it helps sort of build that. Yeah, it helps with all that and brain development and teasing and everything like that. It's not, yeah, it's, no. I, it is a good connection to have for dad because if the baby's teasing and the mother's really stressed and the mother doesn't want to do it, well, the dad can just give the baby a sort of massage for teasing and that's giving the mother a break mm-hmm. and it's giving the dad a chance to bond with the baby as well. Yes, of course. Oh. See, now that's that. See, like I said, I, I I never even considered that to be honest. That makes that makes complete sense to uh, to to do so. Um, so when you're talking about the movement patterns and all that sort of stuff, there is a lo- awful lot of YouTube stuff about baby massage. Um, because there is always an awful lot of stuff a lot. <laughs> on, yes. on throw, throwing about on, on, on YouTube. So how do you filter through the, the nonsense? Because like I said, there's a lot on YouTube and a lot of stuff I come across on YouTube is not really that reliable. So is it, again, find an expert in your area, find an expert online such as, such as yourself, or <sighs> is following random YouTube stuff okay for baby and stuff? I think that's a very, very interesting question because I think you need to, you do need to make sure that who's massaging, who, who, who's teaching your baby, who's yeah. teaching you to massage your baby um, is qualified and does mm-hmm. have, does have um, qualifications. And you that's don't, it. I mean, you don't know whether somebody um, on a YouTube video is qualified. You don't mm-hmm. know that. And I guess with me, you don't know if I'm qualified or not, but I, I have got the certificates and I have done, I've actually done two courses in baby massage. I did right. one in Australia and then I, I retrained with the company in the UK mm-hmm. because I just wanted to get a bit more, a bit more understanding about it. So yeah, I guess you, I guess you just need to do your research and sort of check it, check out, check out the people who you're seeing on on YouTube and checking out to see what what qualifications they do have, or maybe just emailing them and asking them advice. Mm-hmm. That way, that way you're getting to know what if they do know their stuff or not. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. That's what I that's what I would be doing, and seeing if they have any sort of other other social media outputs like Facebook, like Instagram, and if and what and if they've had any testimonials from other people and things like that, that's that's what I would suggest to do, because there are a lot of cowboys out there who aren't who aren't qualified and and do matters. But then, having said that, there are midwives out there who who have who have trained have gone and done a, a very basic course in baby massage. And if I'd seen it, if I saw a midwife doing it. I'd have more faith in, in a midwife who, who'd only just done a sort of couple of days or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'd have more faith in a midwife because I know that they've got the the background with babies. Well, yes, I suppose they can, uh, they at least be able to, they'll be better at, I don't know, reading the signs or. Um, yes, exactly. And all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yes. But I, yeah, I, I always, people always ask me that question and it's, it's something that I, I always sort of say, you know, just make sure that you check out what they've got. And if, if they say they've qualified with a certain company, check out that company to make sure that they, they, the company know what they're talking about as Mm -hmm. well. So, yeah, but um, I mean, it's got so many, baby massage has just got so many wonderful benefits. I mean, I could sit here all night talking to you about <laughs> how, all the benefits of baby massage, but they, they've got, it's got so many benefits. And I just, I just think it's so wonderful for the baby to connect and bond with you and sort of, you learn so much from your baby by massaging them and you're teaching them so much as well. Yeah, um, no. But you're the, singing. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can sing. You can sing when you're massaging your baby. You can sing them little rhymes when you're massaging them and you're teaching them language. You're teaching them how to communicate. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them verbal cues. I mean, yeah, there's so many, so many wonderful benefits other than bonding. Bonding is good. Bonding is a good one, but I just wanted to mention the other one because we've been talking a lot about bonding. Um, But there's so many other benefits out there too for baby massage. Was there anything else you wanted to mention on the, with regards to um, benefits and where people can find you and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, I'll yes, I'll just mention a few other benefits and then I'll let you know where people can find me. Yeah. As I was as I mentioned at the beginning, you were asking me about essential oils. Mm-hmm. Um that that was going to bring into the senses about how baby massage can help with the senses, because I, I mentioned smell by talking about the essential oils, mm-hmm. but it's also good for vision because you're con- you're connecting with your baby. You're encouraging your baby to look at you, you and your baby's watching watching what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one is hearing, because your baby is um, when you're talking to your baby and singing to your baby and having communicating with them, they're hearing your voice and they're getting they're getting used to language and words. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we mentioned touch as well. Um, yeah, and taste is it taste? Um, they, I was just with taste. That's why we don't use essential oils because we know that babies put everything into their mouths. Yes, of course, they're, they're very, they're very, uh, very touchy, aren't they? They're, as in, they like to touch absolutely everything. Yeah, that's their way of that's their way of communicating. Yeah. So, and you asked me about how you can get in touch with me. If you go to um, mybabymassage.net forward slash um, healthy, your podcast, Healthy Postnatal, on that page, you will see all the, all the different ways that people can contact me. I also have an Instagram account called Baby Massage Helen. Mm-hmm. I have a I have Facebook as well, but I that tends to be, a, I've sort of rather now swaved to Instagram because I find it a lot easier. There is, I think it's Bernie. I, I haven't used the Facebook one for a while, so. Okay. Um, but it is, it is there. You can, if you put a link to it, you'll see it on on the Instagram bit as well. But mainly, mainly I use Instagram. Okay. Obviously, so. obviously, I will link to absolutely everything in the podcast description as well. On that happy note, I will just press stop record here. Um, press stop record is exactly what I did. Uh, apologies to Alan, it, it had some technical difficulties, I had a cold, it, it, it all went horribly, horribly <laughs> wrong. Wherever it could go wrong, it doesn't usually happen. Anyway, uh, you can find out more about baby massage and uh, access um, the her Helen's free uh, video introduction and all that by going to mybabymassage.net forward slash healthy postnatal. Uh, I will link to this, of course. Again, thanks very much to Helen for coming on. I could basically talk to her all day. She she is a lovely, lovely person who knows a lot about baby massage. We agree on many of the benefits of baby massage. And, you know, I, I strongly recommend that um, that you do something like this with your little one. Find the time, make the time. It'll it'll work wonders for yourself and, and for the baby. Um, in the news this week, because there is an in the news this week. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, what did I say the in the news this week was? Uh, the government, the UK government kind of snuck this in a little bit this week, which is a little bit, as my phone pings in the background, I do apologize for not having it on silent. Um, it, it kind of got snuck in under the radar a little bit that abortion uh, was deleted from the UK government organized international human rights statement. Um you know, it's a multinational statement uh, committing to, as the humanist UK uh, website reports it, or the Humanist UK uh, reported, saying it committed to the fundamental rights of women and girls. They've been amended to remove references to sexual and reproductive health and rights and bodily autonomy. This really is, you know, if you think that what happened in America can only happen in America and certain other uh, backward countries, you've got another thing coming. We've got three or four. Um, MPs in Parliament that are vehemently uh, anti-abortion. Um, Jacob Rees Moggs and Mogg and all those guys. Um, and you know, that's a bit of a. You want to keep an eye on these people, <laughs> and you want to keep an eye on this stuff. So I would strongly recommend just send your MP a little. Uh, a little email, right? You can find uh, find their, their email addresses very easily. Uh, and you send them a little email saying, hey, add this back in. Because only if people complain about this sort of stuff will anything actually get done. 
uh, by it. You know, it's interesting because um, obviously I stay in Edinburgh, and in Edinburgh, the the council recently changed the rules so that the strip clubs are banned. You know, the lo- local Scottish government basically said um, that local councils councils could decide on this sort of stuff now. Knowing full well that most of that a lot of them would start banning them, you know, uh, our government, the the SNP in Scotland is also opposed to all that sort of stuff. Um, with regards to uh, the strip clubs and all that sort of thing, um, I don't have a particularly strong opinion on it. Uh, with regards to strip clubs and, and and sex work and all that sort of stuff. But I do think, you know, women's rights are women's rights. And it's quite funny how they're being eroded absolutely everywhere. And that no one seems to do anything about it. And the main thing is that they're being eroded by women. Right? In Scotland, we have a female leader and we had all the main leaders. I spoke about this before. We had all the leaders of the main parties in Scotland. Uh, the Conservatives, Labour and the SNP were female at one stage. And they all did nothing for women in Scotland. Absolutely, hee haw, uh, especially for postpartum women. It is, uh, unless you, of course, are a big fan of the baby box, then the SNP brought that in. Other than that, these three parties did absolutely nothing because fundamentally they didn't give a crap. Um, and that is very, quite common with postnatal care, and you see it now. There's are eking more and more towards the Puritan approach, and that means stripping off rights. And before you know it, abortion is gone. And before you know it, other things are gone. You know, like in America, all of a sudden, the Republicans are voting against contraceptive pills and all that sort of stuff. It's going to happen. These things creep in. They creep in slowly. So email your MSP or your MP or whoever, your local representative, and say, this is not acceptable. This is not what I'm standing for. This is You, won't, you will lose my vote if you do this stuff. Anyways, on that happy note, as there are dogs barking in the background, and I've got five here, so... Apologies if you hear anything in the background other than a little kitty panting. Um, you have a tremendous week. Peter at healthypostnatalbody.com. If you have any questions, comments, want to call me a jackass, it's all okay. Just email in. Um, more interviews coming up over the next couple of weeks. I've got some phenomenal guests lined up. Um, you take care of yourself. Here's a new bit of music. Bye now.
can't 